Hey art friends, I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to be drawing and painting a Southwest landscape. So a landscape is a drawing or a painting or even a picture of land. Okay, so a portrait is a picture of a person and a landscape is a picture of land. Um, and so we're gonna be doing it with um, Southwest landmarks. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm glad you're here. Let's get going. Hey everyone, before we start our art project, I wanted to listen to this story called Coyote Places the Stars. And I really want you to look at the illustrations because they are gorgeous. And it's also gonna be very similar to the style of illustration that we're gonna make um, with our drawing today. So let's go ahead and listen to this story. Coyote Places the Stars. Coyote Places the Stars, retold and illustrated by Harriet Peck Taylor. Many moons and many moons ago, a coyote lived in a canyon by a swift running river. He spent his days roaming the land, chasing butterflies and sniffing wildflowers. He lay awake many nights gazing at the starry heavens. One summer night, as he was relaxing in the cool grass with his friend Bear, Coyote had an idea. I think I will climb to the heavens and discover their secrets. Bear scratched his big head and asked, How can you do that? I can get up there with no trouble at all, Coyote said. Now, Coyote was very skillful with a bow and arrow. He gathered a very large pile of arrows and began to shoot them at the sky. The first arrow whistled through the air and landed on the moon. Coyote launched a second arrow, which caught in the notch of the first. Whirr! went one arrow. Whiz! went the next, and on and on until this long line of arrows made a ladder. Coyote then began to climb. He climbed for many days and nights until he finally reached the moon. He slept all that day, as he was very tired. That night, Coyote had another clever idea. He wondered if he could move the stars around by shooting at them with his remaining arrows. His first arrow hit a star and moved it across the sky. He found he could place the stars wherever he wanted. Coyote wagged his bushy tail and yelped for joy. He was going to make pictures in the sky for all the world to see. First, he decided to make a coyote. So, he shot one arrow after another until the stars were arranged in the shape of a coyote. Next, he thought of his friend Bear and placed the stars in the form of a bear. Coyote worked all night creating likenesses of all his friends, mountain lion, horse, goat, fish, owl, and eagle. With the stars he had left over, he made a big road across the sky. When he was finished, he began to descend his ladder back to earth. That night, when the bright moon rose in the east, Coyote saw his handiwork and began to howl. Owie owoo ah! was carried on the wind through the shadows of the canyon. Birds and animals awoke suddenly and listened to the mysterious sound. It seemed to be calling to them. From canyons and mesas, hills and plains they came, following the sound. Bears bounded out of their dens, squirrels scampered, and rabbits hippity-hopped over the hills. Bobcats crept, and bristly porcupines waddled along the trail. Graceful deer moved swiftly, while lizards slowly crawled across the desert. Silvery fish splashed their way upstream. The mighty mountain lion and herds of buffalo joined the journey. The great eagle soared over moonlit mountains. On and on went the parade of animals following Coyote's magical voice. Finally, Coyote appeared high on a rock. The animals formed a huge circle and all became quiet. Coyote's eyes blazed with pride as he said, Animals and birds and all who are gathered here, please look at the sky. You will see the stars are arranged in the shapes of animals. I made a ladder to the moon, and from there I shot my arrows to create the pictures you see. As the animals looked up, a great chorus of woofing and whiffing 
and screeching and squawking filled the air. I made a coyote and my friend bear. You will see the mysterious owl, the great eagle, the goat, horse, fish, and the mighty mountain lion. This is my handiwork, and I hope that all who see it will remember coyote and all the animals of the canyon. The animals gave a great feast for Coyote, and they sang and danced through the night. The animals decreed that Coyote was the most clever and crafty of all the animals. Coyote was so grateful that he declared, I will always be your friend and the friend of your children's children. Now, to this day, if you listen closely in the still of the night, as the moon is rising, you may even hear the magical howl of Coyote. He is calling you to go to your window, to gaze at the star pictures, and to dream. The end. Alright you guys, we're going to be doing this beautiful watercolor landscape, and we're going to be using the Southwest as our inspiration. So let's look at a couple of things that are very well known in the Southwest. Of course, cacti, I mean they're all over. There's lots of different kinds of cactus out there. There's ones that are round, ones that are tall and skinny. Um, so just think about the different kind of cactus that you've seen. Another thing that's very known to the Southwest are like these rock formations. There's a lot of this red rock. There's arches, there's these buttes, there's these mesas, which are kind of like long, kind of like they almost look like a big table where they have a flat top. Um, so this is something else that's also very um, well known to the Midwest. So kind of be thinking about maybe incorporating some kind of a rock formation into your painting. And of course the sunsets. So this kind of incorporates all of it. It's got some cactus, it's got some of those rock formation, and it also has a beautiful background um, in the colors. All right, the last thing I want to talk to you about is this page here. It's talking about the background middle ground and foreground of a painting or a picture. Um, we're gonna start by drawing our foreground, then we're gonna move on to our middle ground and we're gonna end up on the background. So the foreground is the thing that's the lowest part of your painting and it's also the closest to us. Okay, so in this case, it's these rocks. Then you move up to your middle ground and the middle ground is you know in between the background and the foreground. So it's kind of in the middle of your painting or your drawing. And in this case, it's the water right there in the middle. And the background is the thing that's the farthest away from you, okay? It's usually drawn a little bit smaller than it actually is because it's so far away. That shows perspective. So when things are farther away, they're smaller. When they're closer to us, they're bigger. So the background. So be kind of be thinking about a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. All right, let's get to drawing. All right, you guys, we're going to start our drawing. So what you're going to need is just a piece of white paper. I use 9 by 12 white construction paper. You're going to need some crayons, and you're going to need some watercolor paints, a paintbrush, and a cup of water. All right, let's start off by drawing an outline of our southwest landscape. And remember we talked about the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. So we're gonna start by drawing our foreground, so the things that are closest to us. So I'm gonna start by drawing maybe a couple cactus down here. So I'm just gonna draw, I might draw one of those ones that has like a bunch of those circular shapes. And I'm gonna kind of overlap them All right, I think maybe I'll draw, maybe it's like some aloe over here. Okay, and if you wanted to draw like even one of those very kind of typical cacti, you could. Okay. We'll add some more details after this, but we're just gonna draw like the basic shapes of them. 
Okay, so then this is gonna be our foreground. This is what's closest to us. And now we're gonna do the middle ground. So the middle ground's just gonna be like some desert um, floor here, the desert, the, the ground or whatever. So I'm just going to draw some kind of like lines that kind of just show like maybe there's this hill right here. And I'm gonna do it behind my cactus. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna start the line here, pretend it goes behind here, continue it, pretend it goes behind here, continue it, and so on. Maybe I'll draw a little kind of a rolling hill here. Continue that. Let's see. Perfect. I don't want to do too many of these, but I can do a couple of them. Okay, so now that's my middle ground. And I could even think about putting like a, if I wanted to put a horizon line. So the horizon line is the line where the sky meets the earth. So I could put like a straight line here. And I'm going to now work on my background. So my background, you can add, remember we talked about all the different things we saw in that, in, on those pictures, like the arches, we could do some rock formations. So think about what you want to do there. And let's just add some different kind of rock formations or whatever it is you want to do. You can, this is totally up to you. So I think maybe I'll do like a one of those big kind of mountain, those big mountain ranges over here. Or not mountain ranges, but rock formations here. Um, I could even do one of those cool like arches, those stone arches. So maybe there's like a stone here and a stone here. And it has like this cool like rock arch that's kind of been eroding over time. Um, you could draw a sun, you could draw a moon if you wanted to, kind of depending on what day, what part time of the day you want it to be. I could do some little rocks right here. I could even do like a rock on top of here. Okay, so once you have the basic shapes, what we're gonna do is we are going to add some small texture lines to these um, different things that we've drawn. It's kind of like the book that we read. Um, we're gonna kind of be imitating there. So like I might just kind of draw some lines in here to show some texture. On my cactus here, you know, I could draw some little pokey lines to show where the little stickers are. Just add some texture to these things. So texture means that it's not just a something smooth, it's kind of flat. So maybe I'll add some little lines to this guy. Now we're going to be using watercolor and the cool thing about when you use watercolor and crayon is that the crayon resists the paint from getting on the paper. So wherever there's crayon you're going to be able to see it. Okay I might take some like orange maybe and kind of just put some texture lines in the ground here. And I'll go up here to my rock formations and I can add some texture lines up there. I could even kind of add some like cracks. Just, oh, broke my crayon. Just kind of some lines to show that it's not just like a plain flat surface. And I could even put some texture lines up in the sky if I wanted to, just to kind of um, make it look more interesting. I think I'm going to do kind of like a sunsetty kind of thing. So I might even like kind of start with some yellow down here and then go up to an orange and maybe get some red or some violet red, either one. Oh, here's red. Some red. And maybe I'll end with some violet red. Ooh, I think I wanna add some texture down here to this part of it. Uh, let's see, maybe some black. Maybe some kind of squiggly lines. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. I think I like how all of this kind of looks. I might add a little bit of black up here just to give it a different kind of color. 
awesome. Okay, once you have all your texture lines, then it's time for us to watercolor. Okay, now that we have our Southwest landscape drawn and we have our texture lines added, we're gonna start watercoloring. Now, I'm going to try to stick pretty true to the colors that are in a Southwest, like in the area of Southwest. I'm not gonna do a lot of you know, purples and, and blues. I mean, you could do a blue sky for sure, but I'm gonna try to make sure I kind of stay true to this, what I've drawn. So let's start painting um, from the top to the bottom. That way it kind of, we don't have our arm raking through the, um, the paint. So just go ahead and start painting. Um, use your imagination. Um, you don't have to use the same colors I'm using, you guys. This is totally up to you. Um, just remember, with watercolor, you don't need to be rubbing and rubbing and rubbing on the paint. You just need to get a, your, your brush wet, kind of give it a little one or two wipes, and then just go for it. If you want something to be a lot lighter, so maybe you want to do like a darker spot and then a lighter spot, um, the more water you have and the less paint you have, it'll be lighter. If you want it to be darker, you need to go pick up some more paint. So kind of play around with this. Have fun painting. I cannot wait to see what you guys end up with. All right, you guys, I'm finished. Um, I really love all the different texture lines. I love how I can see them uh, through the paint. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. So just have a great time. Remember our foreground, the things that are closest to us, the middle ground, the things that are in the middle, and then the background, the things that are farthest away from us. Um, I love this. Make sure you put your name on it. All right, guys, have fun.